I wanted to start with polynomials. It was actually very convenient that we began that way because that's where these names come from, oddness and evenness. But when you think about it, there are other kinds of functions that have nothing to do with polynomials that have these same kinds of symmetry. Think, we're in term two right now. Think back to term one, second half. I even alluded to it when we were drawing this. What other kinds of functions do you know that have symmetry like these? Any takers? Y equals to cos x. Okay. Can you draw with me? And this time, as you can see, because symmetry is important, I want to draw both halves. Can you draw for me? What kind of symmetry does cos x have? Hmm. Whoops. Yes. Um, y equals x. Yep. Is that odd or even? Because it uses both types of symmetry. Uh, I'll come back to this in a second. I'll give you a more technical definition for what oddness and evenness are. I just want to explore the pictures first. Uh, the short answer is it's odd symmetry, but there's a couple of reasons you can do that. There's one of them, and there's another one I'll give you in a second. Okay. Cos x. There's cos x. It's a pretty terrible cos x, but you get the idea. What kind of symmetry does this have? Look at odd and look at even. Which one is it? Can you rotate this around to get the same thing? If I, if I grab these ends and then just spin it around, will I get the same thing? You won't, will you? You get this, but upside down, okay? Because this part here will rotate 180 degrees and be on the bottom, okay? So rotational symmetry is not it. Instead, what you want to do is draw a line down, right? In fact, this was something I appealed to back when we were doing the tree expansions, right? I said, look, this cos x part and this cos x part, cos of negative x as it were, are exactly the same. So this is also an even function, right? Think, what's another trig function which has a different kind of symmetry? You did cosine. How about sine? Do you see how sine also has symmetry? But it's the kind that you don't get by reflection, is it? Right? If you reflected it across the y-axis like we did with this, then you're not going to get the same kind of shape. In fact, you're going to get negative sine x. Right? So therefore, we would say this one has odd symmetry, just like y equals x cubed. OK, now I've just given you a visual definition so far. Now I need to give you a proper rigorous definition. And it depends on this function no notation. OK, so this will do. A little subheading, a formal definition. This will be a bit tricky, because it was over a weekend, and we didn't emphasize it as an idea. But I want you to think back to your lesson with Mr. Dennis on Friday. Okay. Do you remember he was talking to you about transforming graphs, or translating them, shifting, all that kind of thing? One of the things he talked about was reflection, like this, right? How do you reflect a graph horizontally? What do you do to it? How do you change it? Like, say this. Bless you. If I wanted to take this guy, which I think everyone knows what it looks like, uh, the roots are at negative 2 and negative 3, so there you go. There's that graph. What would we do to it? He actually took this exact, exact example, I think, to change it from being on that left-hand side to reflect it across to the right-hand side. What do we do? We need some negatives, right? Because negatives are about opposite directions. Okay? The thing you'd have to do to this, in fact, is exactly put in this negative x, right? And then you'd also put in this negative x. Do you remember that? He actually did it on Desmos. He did it on the board. And sure enough, you get um, this shape. Uh, you get the idea. Okay. Now, what is it that he has done from here to here? He substituted every x with a negative x. So how would you write that in function notation? It's f of minus x, right? OK. So now we can use this to talk about odd and even symmetry. We'll talk about even symmetry first. For even functions, what makes an even function an even function is that the function is equal to itself if you are to horizontally reflect it. Right? Let me say that again, because it's, it's 
very concise notation, that's why we're using it, but it packs in so much punch. A function is equal to itself even if you reflect it horizontally. Look at this guy. See these guys, both of them, right? You reflect them horizontally, same thing. Look at cos x, right? You reflect it horizontally, same thing. Okay. Now we can answer the question, y equals x. Do you see why it's not even symmetry, right? It has reflectional symmetry, but not in the right way. It's off at an angle, do you notice that? What gives me truly even symmetry is if it's this y-axis, x equals zero, that's where I have my symmetry, x equals zero, okay? So this is what an even function is. f of x equals f of negative x. Quickly, just for yourself, test that out, right? Do you see why y equals x squared gives you this? E.g. this, right? What is f of negative x in this case? Well, before I get to the actual answer, think about what the substitution means, right? Everywhere you see an x, you substitute it for negative x. And then, of course, you square it. Well, as the theorist suggests, that's just x squared because your double negatives cancel, which is why double negatives cancel. You see why all of these guys are going to have that same symmetry? Because they have an even number of negative signs. Make sense? Okay. That's an even function. What's an odd function? Hmm. Hmm. Now, we have some graphs on the board that I'm going to use to help us understand this, right? Here's what I want you to picture. If you take an odd function, like say this guy, x cubed, I want you to picture, in fact, I will draw it for you. What happens when you flip it horizontally? That's what happens when we take x cubed and we flip it horizontally. This guy over here that used to be in the first quadrant is going to come over to the second quadrant. I'm flipping horizontally, right? This way, left, right. So I'm going to get this shape. Do you agree? This part that used to be in the third quadrant is going to come over to the fourth quadrant. So there he is. There's my new graph, right? So if the original one was f of x, here is f of negative x. We flipped it horizontally. <coughs> Do you notice that what we've got is exactly the same as if we had flipped it vertically? Do you notice that? That's weird, isn't it, right? I actually described it by moving this guy over here, whoop, like that, and this guy over here, uh, like that. Does that make sense? But now what you're looking at is just the same as if I'd said, hey, take this guy, flip him down this way instead. Right, you see it's the same? And it's the same over here, flip him up instead. How would I describe that with function notation? Where's my blue? Flipping horizontally is the same as flipping vertically. How do I write a vertical flip? Maya? Do you see what that means? I, I want to put, supply some words under here so that when you come back to this in a week, you'll be like, what the dickens does this mean? Okay? This is a horizontal reflection. an L, right? If you have an odd function, a horizontal reflection will give you exactly the same result as a vertical one. And the reason why is because that 180 degree rotation, do you remember when we were talking about that? A 180 degree rotation is exactly the same as taking something, flipping it horizontally, and then flipping it vertically. That's exactly the same as a 180 degree rotation. Okay, so that's why these things are the same put together is a 180 degree rotation. I should say around the origin, but you get the idea. Okay. Right, so can you see why we proved that x squared is an even function? How would we prove that say x cubed is an odd function? How would you do it? All you have to do is come back to this definition. That's why definitions are so important. Rather than sort of like vaguely draw a picture and say, oh, it kind of looks like that, this formal definition here just sort of maps it out for you. If this is what f of x is, then tell me what f of ne negative x is. Not a trick question, just what do I do? Everywhere I see x, 
I'm going to substitute it for negative x. That's what it is, right? But this is negative x times negative x times negative x. So how many negatives are there? Three, two of which will cancel, leaving you with just one, right? But look at this guy. By definition, that's a vertical flip, isn't it? That's negative f of x. So this means it's an odd function once we've ended there. Does that make sense? You will notice an important thing that you will hopefully remember back from trig identities. If I want to prove that this is the case, I don't write this as my first line. I write this as my last line. Does that make sense? Yes. So just watch out for that. Don't begin here. This is where you should end. So I just think about what the function is and I substitute in negative x. If it's even or if it's odd, then you'll see what comes out the other end. One last question before I set you to work. I began this morning's lesson with this guy. What kind of symmetry does he have? Isn't it an odd function? It's not an odd function, right? Because if you go in and you put in negative x, like I did up here, you don't get minus f of x back, do you? You don't, you don't get this. This is what odd symmetry would be. Is it an even function? Well, it has an even power, doesn't it? x squared. But it is not an even function. Why not? What, what would I need for it to be an even function? Here's my definition of an even function, right? Let me try. If f of x is that, then f negative x will be x squared minus 5x plus 6. Do you agree? Is, is that the original function? It's a no. So it has a kind of symmetry. It's just neither of these. And in fact, you'll find the vast majority of functions um, doesn't fit nicely into these exact patterns. But when they do happen, you can notice immense like structure and you can do lots of really important things when we get to calculus next topic. Okay.